So once we have these weak forms, we can discretize our domain and restrict the H1 space into a finite dimensional space, a subset of all possible uh, H1 functions. So here, let's go to MATLAB and uh, click my window. So let's generate a mesh. So I'm going to launch PD Toolbox. So what I can draw is an arbitrary polygon, I guess. You can make any shape you want. Okay, so I have a domain like that. I can mesh it, so I get a mesh, and uh, I can, in the mesh menu, I can export the mesh into the MATLAB workspace. So what I get is three variables, uh, E, P, and T. Uh, P is a two-dimensional, it, it just contains the X as the first row and Y as the second row, and T contains the first three rows of t contains the indices in p of the three vertices of each triangle element the final row is the index of the domain so you can make multiple domains in this case i only have one domain so it's uh, all of them are one e is pretty complex but we won't use this at all so so we only we are going to only use the first two rows of e so e is not all the edges it contains only the outside boundary edges okay so so we are going to only use e to identify which points lies on the boundary okay so so for example we are, let's let's figure this out for now um, so i at the boundary is simply equal to the unique points in the first row of e and the, the second row of e so these are IB. They are uh, there are. It turns out there are seventy uh, points. There are exactly seventy points on the on the uh, on the boundary, which makes sense. There are seventy edges on the boundary, right? So if you look at the dimension of E, there are seventy edges. So uh, so because it's two-dimensional domain, the number of edges on the boundary is the same as the number of points on the boundary. All right. So what's next? Let's visualize the mesh. So MATLAB, there is a try mesh function. And uh, the first argument of try mesh should be the triangles, which I can take the first the three rows of T. And MATLAB actually needs its, sorry, needs its transpose. So it needs a n by three matrix as, as the triangles. And the three are just the indices of the points. And uh, the x dimension of p is p1, and the y, uh, the y dimension is p2. So that gives me, da, 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 da. I think I ha have an actual parenthesis. So that gives me a mesh. Uh, let me close. Right, so that's, that's a visualization of the mesh we just made, right? So when we are talking about finite element, we are going to be defining in this lecture a piecewise linear function that is piecewise linear in each of these small triangles. And uh, to also, we are going to enforce these functions to be continuous. So can you visualize what a piecewise linear and continuous function should look like in such a domain? A linear function on a triangle is just a, a flat but slanted function. If you think of the value of the function in the, the in the other space, let's let's for example let's make one. So let's say u is going to be zeros. Uh, the number of points is four hundred and six. And let's make a random u to be uh, to be one. Okay. I'm just making. Uh, I'm just making a function that is equal to zero on all grid points except for one grid points, and let's visualize what this function looks like. 
I'm going to try match the function, but with another variable u here. This is how the function look like. It's a function that is piecewise linear because I mean because it's uh, on every on all the flat surfaces it's piecewise linear for sure because it's zero, and on these on the size of these particular points, they are also piecewise linear, right? Because each element is a triangle, and if you define the three values at the three vertices, you get a linear function. You get a unique linear function. So this is one of the basis functions. And uh, I think you can also do a try surf that may make it a little bit more clear. Right, so that gives you, uh, that gives you a continuous surface. I shouldn't, oh. Da, 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 da. Let me let me do that again. That's rotate, yeah, rotate three D. So so you can see it's a, it's going to be a function that is a, a continuous everywhere and piecewise linear. Okay, and we can do this for as many times as there are interior grid points. Right, because if I have the boundary values to be zero, I don't need the boundary grid points to contribute to the basis functions. They are all zero.